Hi, Mark Savage here, and welcome to my channel, Moped Time. What are we doing? This is called David, a Speed Fight 4, and this is called Lewis, <laughs> a Sinus Harris 125. Um, okay, this is from David from Burnham. Okay, nice guy. Um, advertised the bike for sale. A uh, little Speed Fight 4 for parts, really. There's lots of little bits wrong with it. But for me to have it for the money he was asking was brilliant. And it was nice. I contacted him, said I do YouTube videos. He went, hello, Mark. Straight personal to me. It was really nice. Um, and I popped around it last night. I sort of double dated myself, if I'm honest with you. I'd arranged to pick this up and this. So I got down there and I'd like him to have a good old chat with him. But I was sort of like, oh, I've got to go and pick the other one up. So, David, thank you so much. Lovely little bike. I'm going to go through what the basics are wrong with it. Then I met Lewis last night from Harlow. Another nice little young lad, watched a few of my videos, um, bought this to do up, but unfortunately it hasn't turned out the problem the way he wanted to. So anyway, let's start going both over them today and then there'll be a set of videos every week of me going through them with the parts that are wrong, if we can repair them and what we're gonna do with them. So, Speed Fight 4 first. So I've not owned a Speed Fight 4 before. Um, I messed a lot around with the 1s and 2s, and I love them. The 3s were a bit more harder to work on, they have a lot of earth problems, CDI problems, clock problems, etc, etc. And I just found them a lot harder to work on, really hard to get parts for. The 4 came out with lots of upgrades, uh, this lovely LED dash, we're going to have a look at it in a minute, or is it LCD dash, probably better. Um, the basics are still the same, engine placement, etc, etc, just nicer plastics and a few more little gizmos on there. Um, the problems are still the same. Really hard to get parts for. So I met David last night, nice fella. He'd brought this for parts because um, it was a non runner, needed a bit more work. He'd done the other one that he had up, sold that, made a few pounds. Job done, I can't knock anybody for doing that. And then he's left with this. Now, in parts, this is worth a lot of money. You know, fairing parts, uh, engine parts, tyres, wheels, calipers, front end, clocks, etc. So for me to buy it, I was gambling on whether it's worth trying to get back on the road or whether it's just worth having for parts so I can get another SB3 or 4 and then I can do them up. So you've always got to calculate what's it worth doing. Um, exhaust, this is an SB2 exhaust and then someone's cut the front end of it to make it fit this. I can't knock that, it's not a bad exhaust. Rub it down, paint it up, looks good as gold and it will actually improve performance of these. So when he bought it, it was a non runner, it does turn over he says, um, the problem is the crank, I think the guy said he put a new crank on there, but the nut, and this is the variating nut, and this is the problem you get with these, um, it's threaded, so when you put it on it just comes back off again, um, there's a few little parts in here, and this is what I'm talking about, this goes on the kick bit, the nut goes on there, and once this spins round it comes off and you just can't get them started. Obviously behind this goes the variator system, you know, like that, and just goes in and out. If that's not holding on, the belt will come off and it's bloody useless. Now, I've seen before cut people tap them before, re-thread them. It's a possibility, running engine, it's got a log book, you need a front end. The problem is, you're never gonna find one, and it ain't worth buying a new one. You might find an SP3 one to go on the front here, possibility, so I've really got to look into this one. Um, rear brake's dead, front end's missing, um, and it doesn't run turns over. So, not mega work to be honest with you, it'd be quite quick to find out whether this is worth just for parts because you can't get new parts for, and I've got to decide, like he did, what's it worth doing. I could try and do it all up, I could just use the parts, or I could actually just strip it all down, have the time and sell it all the parts. It's all about making a few pounds while you enjoy what you're doing. Quick look around it. So here we are, front end. It's an LC, not AC, so radiator, water cooled, a little bit harder to work on the engine if you want to take the top off, but a little bit faster I always found. Front tyre very low, disc looks okay, I haven't checked the old brake pads out, that's just a bit of dust on them, not leaking, because these go as well. Uh, it's been sprayed obviously, you know, I don't think these were originally, well they did do a matte black version, so maybe this is the original, just might need cleaning up. Here's the little clocks, 
In the next videos, we're going to put in power to it, see if it turns over and everything else. But at the present minute, it's missing the usual little bits, you know, the cover. And these cover, these bits are really difficult to get hold of. Petrol in the front of these. So yeah, it's very much the same as the SP3. Very nice back tyre, carburetor, box, all handy to have. Water pump there, you've got a static coil in there. Brilliant. You've even got the hanger as well, which is handy. Um, lights at the back. Now... These are ordinary bulbs, which is good. A lot of the newer ones now are LED, and they're something you should be checking when you're buying a bike. Rear suspension, again, you know, it's a nice shock, 40, 50 quid. Kickstart mechanisms there. It's just not bad at all. Inside, obviously, now, that's a sports one. May go faster, but obviously it's smaller. So, yeah, not quite sure. Come with a logbook as well. Cigarette lighter, obviously charge a little bits and bobs. Battery, so looking at this, the basics of it, very much SP3, just a lot smarter. I think the front lights on these are really quite nice now. Um, but still, a little 50cc, not bad at all. As I said, just a quick look around. You've got all these switches and everything else here. Everything, a lock and barrel, CDI unit, everything on here separately is worth a lot of money. But unless you're willing to take them all apart, I mean, this is how I started. I had about 10 of these in my garden, and then when I bought another one, I had all the parts for it. You need tools, though, and you need a little know-how. And I mentioned that because I'm going to go on to now the Sinus Harrier 125. So here we have the Sinus Harrier. This is a 2018 bike. There's just so much wrong with it. Lewis bought this um, from a friend. All they had to do was do a few little bits to it and get it on the road, wanted good money for it. It's difficult, you know. I said I wasn't going to slate Lewis, and I'm not going to, you know. Um, obviously, he bought this bike in good faith. He knew there was a few little bits wrong with it. Um, starter motor, so he replaced that. Uh, it said the belt had broke, so he replaced that. I think it's got two different keys to it, so you know the lock's been changed, so it's just a rear lock here. Um, he did that, but he didn't check out the rest of the bike first. Here's the biggest problem if you want to start doing mopeds, bikes, do them up to earn a few pounds. Don't just look at something that's three years old, this is two and a half years old, and think, hey, it's going to be simple, back on the road, easy. This bike, as is, will never pass an MOT. And the money you've got to pay on this bike far outweighs what the bike's worth. And that's the difficult thing. I sat with him last night for a good 20 minutes looking over the bike, and it was horrible to look at everything and find fault with it. So... Give a quick look around the bike, and this is what you need to weigh up if you're going to buy a bike. You need to weigh up what you're going to do. So on first look, it's not too bad. It's not really, it might have been over, but it's not too bad. A few little marks on it, a little crack here. Um, it doesn't look like it's been down the road. Yeah, okay, it does look like it's been down the road, but probably a very, very small little spill, you know. Um, hand painted that, you could rub that down, and get some heat proof paint for that. Now, you might notice some wires here. That's what I first noticed, and he mentioned that he'd changed the starter mode but left the original wires here. You've got to take them off. If you're selling a bike, you've got to take them off. The exhaust, heat proof, rub that down. Nicely done the cover, but it needs rubbing down. Rear suspension, well, I can tell you they're gone. Okay, um, they're, they're too springy, so the dampener's gone, so all you've got is spring. That's what I was mentioning about LED lights. These are LED complete lights back and front, except the main bulb. When these go, it's gone. You've got to buy a whole new unit. And you know they're not made to the best hmm, electrics, let's say that. But these do work well. I don't know, actually. I haven't actually checked them. Airbox, brand new start we put on there. Um, tire was flat. But the site I noticed straight away, it did start. He said it didn't start that well. And he did start it. Um, and the back wheel was spinning like a good one. I'll get there in a minute. Dash, mirrors, you know. And this is, look, tacky, look. It doesn't, it should always spring back. I don't know if that's WD-40 or just poor springs, but that will fail the MOT on just something as simple as that. It's not retracting, and it does. So you could be able to WD that up. Front end, doesn't look a bad little bike. LEDs again, normal bulbs. So all in for one, two, five, LED indicators. Here's something I noticed straight away again. Gone. This has got 8,000 miles on the clock, and both sides have gone. So that's front and rear suspension. Now, if you're going to view a bike, always take it off a stand. You may not be able to ride it up and down. But as I said, the rear wheel was spinning like a good one. Brake, not that good on the back. When I tried to stop the back wheel, the engine's 
the engine revs lowered. I said to him, what happens when you stop a traffic light? It stalls. Now, he replaced the belt, which is great. I mean, that's not a bad job. He replaced the belt, and then he thought to himself, um, he took the variator off, the rollers were flat spotted. He needed to change them. So he did the star mower, he did the belt, he should have done the rollers, but the rear wheel was spinning. And that's a clutch problem, definitely a clutch problem. They wear out. 8,000 miles, it shouldn't be like that. Front and rear suspension gone, fouled MOT. Take off the stand. Do you see what I'm saying? You don't get that nice spring trip. Anyway, this is, this is worse. Ready? That horrible sound is your main shank, okay? Your headstock, your headstock's bearings. That's just gone, okay? Um, whether it, you might be able to take, and it's a big job though, you've got to have this up and up again off the floor, a good six inches off the floor on the stand and weigh the back down. You've got to take everything off, all the front end. Then you've got to undo the three main um, nuts off there, one release the other, take them all off, take the brakes off, drop the whole shank out, and then you can replace the bearings. It's a big job. Garage will charge you loads for doing that. It's a lot of labour. The parts only probably 20 pounds if you can get the parts here in the UK. But that's gone. So then you're talking the front suspension. The front suspension's gone. So you know, now, a lot of places won't bother renewing them because of how cheap they are. So you have to buy a whole new one. So you've got to buy a new front end for this. That's money. Rear suspension, that's money. You know, and a lot of work. So bless him, when he bought this, if he'd have thought, that don't sound right, check them then. He wouldn't have paid out the money, and that's what I felt sorry for him. I know he paid out for the starter. He said originally it wasn't running, it wasn't starting that well. And he done something that you shouldn't do. The solenoid, put a bolt across it to get it starting. Yeah, that can blow the CDI, please don't do that. Check out why. It can be as simple as these switches, it can be just WD, but he knew that when you pressed it, you got a click noise. That means the relay works. That's great news. Then it's down to the starter. But still intermittent could be a worrying problem. I said this when I did a little variation. It was like £699 for the variations. Probably it's gone up now, but at the time they were 600 quid. And you've got to think that's import taxes, that's the sellers, bits on top and warranty. You know, they're probably 150 quid. This is another fine example. I don't know what they are. Let's say 1295 um, but that's all with duty, getting it over here, shipping, the dealer's prices. You know, you could be looking at a £400 bike. Um, the parts are not really up to spec. So, 8,000 miles. Looking on the outside is what you're looking at, so it is in miles. It's done 8,100 miles, and the front and rear suspension completely gone. Headstock's gone. Um, no amount of servicing. I mean, you know what? I don't know whether this guy was doing trying to do wheelies, whether he's bumping up on curbs or not and back off them. Could have been a delivery. I don't know. But for 8,000 miles, you expect it to be a little bit more robust than that. Now, I had to decide this. Um, what I was going to do with it. When he took the variator off, there was oil there. Now, when he did the variator, he said there was oil in there. That's really not good. The belt had snapped, by the way, and that must have been because the clutch was failing. Um, there's oil there, and that is the engine seal, crank seals. They can be a bugger to do. You can get the little trick where you put wood screws in them and you can pull them out. If you can do that, brilliant, but it's a bugger. Took the spark plug out and cleaned it. It wasn't in good condition and full of oil. So we've got a possibility of now of piston or valve seat failure. We've got uh, crank seals, they're failing, headstock, front suspension, clutch, rear suspension. The list goes on. Um, yeah, it's a bugger. What do you do with it? So, both bikes, we spoke and had a cut the mates there. Um, good lads, I've got to say, all of them. Um, but I, I didn't feel very good, you know, I, I wanted to walk away because you know when oh, I'm spotting everything that's wrong with this bike and I'm mentioning it and his poor face like, I think you know but he didn't want to mention it or he didn't know, I just felt bad, you know, I offered him a silly price for it because I don't think I'm ever going to get this back on the road. I most certainly will never pass another MOT, I mean I could, if I'm lucky, get another clutch for this, tighten up headstock, you know, try and refill here bits and bobs and then go on the road for another six months, but you can never sell this knowingly to anybody knowing that it's a pile and it will never pass an MOT, it's a throwaway bike. So do I use this just for parts like this? Do I do them up? You're going to find out in the next set of videos. 
I'll look around this one on my next video. We'll start taking it apart and start looking at all the bits we can do with it. The week after, I'm going to take this apart and start looking at it. And then we'll go back to this one and decide what we're going to do. So there's a load of moped videos coming up. Sorry for big bikes and cars, but this is where I started from. This is what I get asked the most to do. And this is the most help I get asked, to be honest with you. Um, yes, I love my Triumph. And I am going to go for a ride out on this. So you're going to get a ride out video somewhere between there as well. Um, but moped's coming up. And I'm actually on the hunt now for um, projects that I can get on the road. Maybe not as bad as these, you know, I don't mind doing um, pistons and stuff like that, but when it comes to so many bits, let's say this bike's worth 700, maybe 750 now, um, I paid good money for it, central money, but if I have to pay out 400 pound in parts, and then you've got to put some warranty, knowing the rest of the bike will fail as well. I didn't mention about the rear end, I can get the wheel and I can move it. It says engine, the actual main shank, it's just a bugger, and they're a bitch, you know, you've got to take the engine out to replace them as well. Um, all in, the person who was riding this bike last, um, yeah, it must be quite scary for them going down the road, and including the flat tyre. A uh, little lad, um, family member, came around the other day with his little ped. Mark, have a look, got an MOT tomorrow. And again, it was like, straight away, the, the front pads were completely gone. You know, uh, the back brake wasn't working really well, so tied up for him. He had two flat tyres. He had two flat tyres. I pumped him up. I said, you're going to ride home a lot better. But it was, again, it was just like, this is wrong, that's wrong. It was, it was masking tape and gaffer tape, holding it all together, it'd come off. It was just too much to pay out, leaking bits and bobs. It's just not worth it. You have to balance that little bit. And that's a difficult part. I'm not saying I'm brilliant. The guys asked me last night, where did I start? I mean, I've been messing around since I was 10 years old. But I suppose professionally, hobbily, I don't know, hobbily, is that a word? <laughs> I've um, been doing it properly now for 10 years, and I would say I have done thousands of speed fights, hundreds of air boxes, etc. So, a master mechanic, self made, um, you know, listen, you can use all the books. You want to be a master mechanic? You can sit there days and days and days. Jaleras, Aprilia SRs, Bergmans, Triumphs. You can look all through these. You can go to school, college, and listen to some bloke waffling on, looking at paperwork, and you looking one in a shop. You can learn that way, or you can learn the other way, which I suppose is the hard way, buying them, taking them apart. I learn visually. I see something. OCD needs to be there as well. Take it apart doesn't work. Do it again, do it again, do it again, and again, and again, and again. Literally, that's how I learned 10 years ago when I really got into this. And I was doing five peds a week, getting into them, taking them apart. I can't do that one, put it to the side. If you're gonna start out, you've got to weigh up, you need loads of tools, you do need them as well. And then, if you buy these manuals, they're complicated. One to 15, go to paragraph seven, chapter five, you're like, I, I don't get it, you know? And that's why I try and do these videos, to help you. Now my early videos, admittedly, little camera, you know, I was too close sometimes, too far apart. Now I've got much better lighting, and I'm gonna show you really close up and slowly what I'm talking about. Hopefully that will help you a lot. This one, the Sinus, it's gonna be a lot of work, a lot of taking apart. Probably a very long video, but we'll go there when we're there. So there you go, David, Lewis, nice meeting you buddies. Um, <laughs> David lives in a great little area, Burnham, on Cratch. Um, and there's a, a cafe there that everybody goes in the summer, you know, to have a little bit of it. It's just a bike meat place. The problem for him, and I found it quite funny, is he literally lives 500 yards, if that, away. So it would probably take him longer to get all his gear on, get on the bike, ride there, and get off again. The bike wouldn't even warm up. He's like, ah! So he goes further away. You know, um, I was brought up on a beach in Shoebury, and we used to go to other beaches rather than the beach you have. You do that, don't you? Anyway, I'll stop chatting. Next video is coming up. Thank you so much. Please like, share and subscribe. Stay with me for this next large set of videos and whatever else pops up in my local area because, you know, you know where I'll land. And if you are local and you've got something sensible that you wouldn't mind me doing a video on, that's not silly money because I, I don't do it to make money on these per se. I do enjoy taking apart. But if you watch Wheeler Dealer and you see sometimes he made £100 or something selling his cars with 40 man hours, you know, a master mechanic... Christ, you can pay a lot of money for them. So I do put my wage in there as well and try and work out what you're doing. But the videos help as well. Right, stop talking. Like, share, subscribe. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.
<clears throat> Mark Savage here and welcome to my blah blah. <clears throat> Hold that thought. I've got loads of power there. David and Lewis. Guess who's back? Back again. David and Lewis. Hi, Mark Savage here. Welcome to my channel. Moped time! I know a lot of you have been waiting for this and it's been bloody hard finding them. Let's call this moped David and this moped Lewis. <laughs> 